here. This is muted. And I'm live. I think everyone can hear us. That's good. Cool. Now I need to do the little promo of sending links to people. Uh, removing the embed because I hate seeing my face huge like that. <coughs> All right. How to bring that links trigger happy WhatsApp does not work. So, anyone who wants to uh, see this should have the links now. All right. Oh yeah, the, the, the other thing I was uh, about to tell you was, I also want to start kind of creating the foundation for um, the compendiums for Trigger Happy. Because the idea is yep. to have a set of compendiums that people can just drag and drop pre-made traps and things like that. That would be, that would probably help with like the getting started for most people. Absolutely. All right. So let's start with trigger happy. All right. So for those joining us, which is probably like one or two per People at this time, I don't know, uh, Twitch isn't giving me any stats right now. Um, <laughs> so I am going to be creating a scene with lots of traps and I'll be using Trigger Happy for it. And this video is going to be a good showcase for how to use Trigger Happy. I have on audio here with me um, Tim T. Posny, for those who know him from um, Discord, and he actually has used Trigger Happy a lot more than me, and he has worked with it to create very interesting traps and uh, macros using his Dynamic Effects module. Um, so it all integrates with both Furnace and Dynamic Effects to create these uh, super cool stuff. Uh, so he's here with me to actually guide me as I guide you. Hello. Uh, yeah, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. All right. So uh, let's let's get started real <coughs> quick. So Trigger Happy is a module found for Foundry. You can download it just using the normal, you know, um, installer thing that's been released in. 0.5.5. So the first step we're going to do is make sure that you have use script macros permission for the players um, because we'll be using a lot of scripts, um, a, a lot of macros, uh, and we are going to enable the modules. All right, so this is a brand new world. There's nothing in it. So first I'm going to enable the furnace because it gives me the advanced module stuff, uh, the advanced macro stuff. I'm going to enable, where is it? I think I'm blind. Where's trigger happy? Here's dynamic effects. And I don't see trigger happy actually. Did I forget to install it? I'm sure that I installed it. Modules. I 
do have my glasses, so I should be able to see it. I don't see it. I'm going to go back to setup and see if I can install it. All right. So where is trigger happy? I don't see it. All right. So here's how to install trigger happy. Um, you go here, trigger happy, you install and there it should be. There it is. So it's technically installed. Now I just created a new world called trigger trigger and I'm going to launch into it and then install it. How can I? I think this is the first time I'm actually streaming and people are chatting. Uh, well, not the first time, but it's it doesn't s appear. So that's like really annoying. What's wrong? Oh yeah, there it is. I'm just blind. Good. So what are people saying? Hello. Uh, you don't need to have furnace before using Trigger Happy, but with furnace you get like advanced macros, which allow you to basically call macros with arguments from chat, which makes trigger happy even more useful. Uh, all right. Someone just said the two best module makers in the same place. <laughs> so that goes to Tim as well. All right. So let's get started with something really simple. We'll create a scene. There you go. We're going to say, we're going to call it uh, introduction to trigger happy. There. Then we need to create a new folder that we're going to call trigger happy. Why did I lose connection? I hope the server isn't down. Uh, seems to be okay. Just reload it to be sure. Um, okay, so I have a folder called Trigger Happy. This is the default uh, folder. Like if you go to module settings, Trigger Happy, you can give it whatever name you want. But the default is Trigger Happy. Um, and I think it's a nice name. So inside that folder, any journal entry that you create will be considered as a um, as a trigger journal. So this is how it works. You create a journal and in it, you can create your various um, triggers. So let's, let's do a simple one. Drag and drop the scene here. And that's the first item in a line means it's going to trigger when that item becomes active. In this case, when you go to the scene. So after that, you can do whatever you want. I can do like actor. Uh, no, I can do like chat message. Welcome to trigger happy. And let's save. So now when we visit this scene, it's going to show that message. So let's create a different scene. Uh, useless And so if we go here, nothing happens. But if we go back here, the trigger is triggered and it says, welcome to trigger happy. All right. So if we have a journal entry that says hi and says, hello, everyone. Thanks for the follow. All right. And it's, it's not inside the folder trigger happy. So it's not, it's not a trigger journal. Um, but what we can do is we can drag and drop it here. Whoop, it needs to like the first item needs to be the scene. So there. So what I'm doing here is when we go to this scene, we're going to send this chat message and we're going to open this journal. All right. So let's try it. Going to an, a different scene. 
let, let me just change the background on this one just to make it clear um, not the grid color the background just to make it clear that we are switching from one to the next all right so I switch here and boom the journal entry hi gets opened and the chat message welcome to trigger happy is uh, is shown as well hey Aso, how are you <laughs> I'm just demoing a module I did for Foundry. Um, all right, so that's how it works. It's just that simple. So let's try and add another effect. So the first, the first link, okay, these are links, right, in the journals. The first link is the trigger and everything after that is an effect. So we can add a new effect called, um, uh, that would be linking to an actor. So let's say uh, hello. And so if I drag and drop at the end of the line, this one, this actor, what happens is the sheet for that actor is going to open. So the journal entry, the sheet for the actor, they open. It's just that simple. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop this actor here I'm going to make a new line and my trigger is going to be the actor itself and what I'm going to do is drop this here so basically what I'm saying here so each line is a different trigger um, rule basically so I'm saying if I click on any token that belongs to the actor whose name is hello then load this scene called useless so if I click here I get moved to the other scene I go back I have the journal open etc sounds good all right now we're going to test it in a um, Oh, I need to log in for that. I'm going to change it to public uh, game. This is on the forge because uh, I, I need to play as a uh, user. So just to show you how it works as a user. There. And can log in as a player. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to need to make this scene not have vision, just so I can see stuff. There. It triggered these. Now, if I click here, I get moved to the other scene. Uh, I'll make it green just so you know that it's not the, the vision that is toggled off there. So it's working as a player. Just like that. I can click on the token and there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a very simple trap and show you how we can do that. Yeah, you all definitely shouldn't try to join at this time. Um, <laughs> but I did set access keys for, for those players. I actually could have just logged in as my user. Yeah, it was a different, it was incognito. Actually, I am going to do that. Uh, private game and I'll just log in and launch yeah that works uh, okay so uh, yeah I click here get moved all good. Uh, Tim, do you have something you want to say?
say add or um, whatever. No, I think that's. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but when you create the actor triggers, there if you click on the actor or click on the token associated with the actor, so it's like um, something that you would the players would click on in game, as opposed to moving next to it, sort of stuff. Yeah. So you have you have three types of triggers. You can have either a capturing token a click token or a move token we'll get to those a bit later uh, but at the moment like the default is to click and i've seen someone i, I believe it was sebastian who was um, who had set up a um a token trigger and he was trying to move their their own uh, token on top of it and it wasn't triggering and they didn't understand why the reason is because it's on a click um, and the reason it's that way is because the demo, um, the demo that we have set up for the forge, uh, let me just log in as a player. The demo that we have uh, set up for the forge works that way. Um, it's because this is why Trigger Happy was created. It was to create this demo basically. So you click here and then you move to the next page, blah, 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 and then it's proceed buttons, right? So you click on a button and then, whoa, this needs to get cleaned up. Uh, so you click on a button and then you move to the next page. Um, you can create a, um, a uh, trigger where you move your token and when you collide basically with the, uh, with the target area, then it moves you and uh, we'll explore that right now. Uh, well, I, I can just say, if you have a token on the board, like this, and it's hidden, right? So the player can't see it. I need to remove these. Player can't see it, so they can't click on it. In that case, the default is going to be for them to move their token on top of it. So let's start with creating a player character, just so I can... Uh, drop a player onto the map, right? So here is my, uh, I'll just do this. Here is my token. Can I, uh, it's paused. And I need to assign it. There. So I can move and as soon as I moved on top of the trigger, it moved me to the other scene. Right, I'm going to edit this real quick because I am getting a little tired of closing that journal entry. There you go. So I am moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. And as soon as I enter that area, I get moved. Uh, and that's just because this, the, the trigger token is hidden. If I unhide it, then it stops being a move trigger. I have to instead click on it. Uh, it's just that simple. Um, and you can you can customize this a little bit more, uh, and we'll get to that. All right. So I wanted to create a trap. Right. So I've shown you how to create um, how to create a uh, um, a actor trigger right by drag and dropping the actor onto the map. Now imagine if you have in your um, in your scene uh, a bunch of traps. So you can have one actor and drop a token of that actor onto the, all these different areas. And then that gives you uh, your trigger if the player clicks on any of those uh, or moves onto any of those. But if you want different triggers and you don't want to have like, if, if you want to have a hundred different triggers, for example, and you don't want to have a hundred different actors <coughs> polluting your, um, uh, your actor 
directory, what you can do instead is just call it, uh, just use token and give it a name, trap number one, and then say what you want it to do. Chat message activated trap number one and a trap number two activated trap number two okay those you can see they are not links because they're not official real links that you can uh, like drag and drop them into um, the journal entry but that's uh, the syntax that I use with trigger happy so what I can do now is create this uh, this token and just call it um, trap number one and I could have a different one here and call it trap number two and there's a difference here The name has to match exactly, so number had to be in lowercase. There you go. So you see, they each trigger a different effect, right? So that's how you can create a single actor here that I'm going to give it a transparent. Do I have those? I should have a transparent. Let me just upload. There was one question in the chat about how expensive having lots of triggers are. I think the, the quick summary is click triggers cost almost nothing to have because they only do anything when you click on them. Yeah. Movement triggers are fairly inexpensive. It does a check every time you move, but it only checks one specific location. Mm -hmm. And capture triggers are quite expensive. If you have a lot of capture triggers, you could actually see performance impact. Yeah. Um, I'm running Tomb of Annihilation and I've got probably half a dozen captured triggers on each level and the players haven't noticed any difference and that's with you know hundreds of tokens on the screen so it's not it's not super um, expensive but capture triggers are much more expensive than anything else okay uh, that's a very good point yeah uh, and I know that Tim has done a lot of work with capture triggers and I know that he has a couple of pull requests for me that I still haven't had time to actually look at and uh, merge. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with those and I definitely want to play with them a bit later and we'll see how having a lot of those is going to impact the performance as well. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it's like having a lot of walls, a lot of uh, tiles. Anytime that you have too many things, uh, it can have uh, an impact on performance. But usually, yeah, yeah like clicked triggers, um, even I that's guess move triggers, like you said, yeah, those yeah. should be fairly, fairly limited. Uh, and scene triggers yeah. are, are, are really uh, easy, yeah. Um, yep. So a capture trigger, that's a good question. What a capture trigger is, it's basically, um, let's see. It's going to capture your, your player's token. I'm going to showcase that right now. I think it's the best thing to do. Hey, why is the, mm, yeah, okay. Uh, prototype token I'm just going to change that to transparent so here is a token I, I would like to always see uh, I would like to see what they are all right, I'm going to call it trap number one. Okay, 
So right now, you see it's it's visible here. If I click it, um, let me clean the log real quick. If I click it, there it is. It shows the chat message. Now, if I go and edit my my journal entry, I can do something like this: add at trigger. And I can say move. And by doing that, now clicking doesn't do anything. But if I move on top of it, it will trigger it, right? So if I, where is it? It's right here. If I move on top of it, it triggers. If I move and jump over it, it doesn't trigger. If I instead, whoops, not sure what I did. If I instead make it into a capture trigger and try to move on top of it, well, that didn't what work. Time is over here. Oh, I was I was shifted and try and try to jump over it. It will capture it and prevent the token from moving. If you are inside the same area as the trigger token, then you can move out. But if you try to jump over it, it will prevent you. So it captures your token. Um, so, I, and let's try to make it a little bigger and see what happens. I don't actually remember what we decided on what would happen in this I case. I think at the moment it goes. To, it just goes to the center, goes to right? The center. Right. So here's my trap, and I try to move across, and then boom, it get it gets to the the center of it. It's yeah. It no, is supposed to, to trigger, trigger the, the chat messages. No, capture only stop only captures the player. If you want to then trigger the trap, you need to put move as well. So capture and move together. Will oh do what you right, expect. good point. Thank capture you, Tim, for being here. Just grabs the token. Right. So if I do this, then it's a capture, and then. Because it's also a move, it considers that you have moved into the trap and then the rest of the, the effects are executed. Is that right? Cool. I did not know that. I did not know that. And this is why we have Tim with us, because he is so much more proficient with actually using this thing. <laughs> um, okay. So we've explored a couple of things. Um, I do want to to have something else here. Let's create a couple of scenes. Level one and level two, just for fun. What I will do is create a new journal that's going, I'm going to call, it doesn't matter what I call it, preloading um, neighboring maps and what I will do is if you enter level one I want you to preload level two and I will do trigger preload and if you enter level two I want you to well I can just drag and drop it trigger preload so what this does is if you go to level one it will automatically preload level the scene level two as if I had clicked on preload scene. So this way your players will always have the next map preloaded for them um, in advance. And they move to the next scene, it's already there, the move is instant, and then the next one is getting preloaded at the same time. So that can be really useful um, for stuff. Uh, so yeah, this will preload each of the other ones. I don't know if it says anything in the log about it, if I can show you that it does, but uh, no, it doesn't. But that's how it works. And I'm pretty sure I tested it. So uh, yeah, all right, let me catch up on the chat here because I've been explaining stuff and not reading what people say. Uh, 
have the whole 15 of us. Wait, I have 15 viewers? I don't think I've ever had... Oh my god, 21 viewers. I've never had that many. Usually it was like one or two. I think my average was 1.3 viewers. With one always being me. Or like OBS counting as the as the, the, the one. <laughs> Alright. Um, About a hidden trap and have it become visible? Um, the answer is yes. Because, they're, because you can write macros... Um, which I'm sure yeah. units will get to. You can have a macro that then cr makes the trap token visible. Last night with my players, where they moved onto a trap and the player disappeared in a cloud of smoke, and it made a cloud of smoke icon become visible. Yeah, actually, ah. if Tim, if you have that map and you can like share it. Uh, so we can view it like give me access to it or like export the world uh, that I can load it myself if you don't want to share your link question that could be something like cool the link uh, the only problem is it's tomb of annihilation which is probably spoiler field spoiler but also I'm not sure if it's something that you're allowed to just share but anyway let me I'll create you an account in the world and I'll come back to you once I've done that. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so when, how often and when does it scan the trigger list? It will scan the trigger list when it detects a journal being saved, created, or deleted, and that's it. So if you are creating journals all the time, sure, it will, you know, um, it will be rescanning it, but it's not that big of a deal, I assume. Uh, hey, Foundry VTT, I'm going to assume that's Andrew, so hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so yeah, it, it, we did answer the, the, <coughs> the performance thing before, but yeah, so when it, it, it scans the trigger list, it, it just does it when you update the the journals themselves um capture triggers can triggers do skill checks on the actors before it moves them it can and probably using a macro let's see if i can do that i have never done this but can can is there a way to like no we can't drag and drop those I, let's see, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I have actually in the macros from Furnace, I have a skill, roll skill. Yeah, there you go. So I can, oh, I can't drag and drop. Oh yeah, I can. No, I can't. Well, I can just import it and then drag and drop it here. So this is, this is what we um, that what I discussed before about using the uh, advanced macros from Furnace, so we can do something like this. So if I do slash roll skill, this is what Furnace gives you. Uh, mm -hmm. I can do um, what what kind of skills? Acrobatics. That didn't work. Why didn't it work? Do I have to enable it first? Ah, uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Not configure players. Since the configure audio video was removed and moved into the configure settings, I I get uh, to click on the wrong thing all the time. Okay. Why isn't that working? Roll skill. Am I doing something wrong here? Oh, the macro isn't available to me, I think. Oh, I would need to share it. 
So I am going to enable a couple of modules which I find absolutely necessary. Permission viewer, which isn't here either. What's wrong? What's wrong with my install? Okay. Um, let, let me roll that for you and permission viewer. But I don't have permission viewer, so it's okay. And there. I do have furnace installed and enabled. Journal entry pins on the map. That's a good question. Uh, it's I don't have support for uh, for pins. No. Um, However, you can always place a um, a token like this on top of uh, the pin. So le let's try and do that now, right? That would be a good thing to try. I can do I can do this. And I can place my transparent token on top of it. Let me keep these visible. And I'm going to make it invisible. Change it to uh, open note. And I'll create a new journal. I'm going to call it a uh, notes, no triggers. Okay. And I will do at token open note at chat message. A note was just clicked. And I am a little bit lost without permission viewer on how to share stuff. Okay, so there should be a note here. So I I've made it invisible, just so the user doesn't see that there's like a clickable trigger behind it. Then I can add at trigger click. Whoops, and save. So now, if I click here, it says a note has just been has, was just clicked. It doesn't work though if I click on the note itself. It's it only works if I click behind it. That sucks. Um, but that's yeah, that's a uh, That's one way, I guess, to, to try and do it. It's not going to be perfect, though. But uh, feel free to file a uh, suggestion on GitHub. Uh, let me catch up a little bit more on chat. So uh, yeah, skill checks. We were going to try skill checks. This is how my brain works. I get distracted, and then I forget what I was doing. There you go, skill check. So macros need to be shared with everyone that needs to have access to it. Is that true? I'm surprised actually about that. Or was it, oh, it wasn't working because it was using, let me roll that for you. And so it was crashing, which is why it was sending it as a chat message instead. <laughs> So let me test and confirm that. So if I do that again, yeah, now it works. Okay, that's why it, w it didn't work before. It's because the macro is using, let me roll that for you. Uh, all right. So how to make that happen? 
one second. I'm getting a phone call. Let's make it roll the skill when you trigger the trap, right? Where's my journal? Right here, intro. We have trap number one, I believe is this big one here. And we're going to, instead of saying activated trap, we're going to do slash roll skill acrobatic now if i try to move across i get this to make the player roll acrobatics check okay now you see me going this side because i'm using like my second monitor which is really far and i can't read all the, the small text of the chat, which is why it disappeared from the screen. I'll read in the chat. Okay. Let it become visible if a player sets off the trigger for it. Yeah, so could you have a hidden trap and have it become visible if a player sets off the trigger? Yes, you could. Um, it, you would just need a macro that changes the hidden value of the trap. But I think for that to work, you need to have the GM logged in and using dynamic effects, which is yeah. um, uh, this great module by Tim here. So yeah, why don't you guide us through it? Sure, so players don't normally have access, or sorry, the ability to change the settings on a token that they don't own. So inside dynamic effects, there's a set of functions that pass a request to a GM user to do it on their behalf, um, which is actually a great time to have a look at um, the thing that we were talking about before, the smoke trap. Um, mm -hmm. I've just sent you a link for the world. Okay, I'll have a look. So with any luck, you'll be able to pull that up. Okay. This is suspenseful. <laughs> Am I logged in as player? Yes. Cool. All right. Now it's your turn to kill me. Ooh, music. Let me just turn that down a little. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so if you head due north. Where's my compass? Whoa. See what happened. I was moving too fast. Um, cool. So I was moving and okay, reset it, please. You want me to reset it? <laughs> yeah. This is cool. All right. So I'm just walking. Blah blah blah. Wait, am I? Yeah, I was focusing somewhere else. Wrong with you. Blah blah Two blah. More and whoa so the trap just appeared a puff of smoke and my token itself just went invisible so for the other players around me i've just disappeared in a puff of smoke that's brilliant correct <laughs> so there's a couple of things that it uses one is the dynamic effects make a token visible piece um, because a player character can't do that there's also another hack in there which allows players to manipulate their tokens even though they're invisible. Normally, if you make a token invisible, all you get is you've got no vision on the scene. Hack in dynamic effects that lets tokens control their invisible tokens. 
cool. I love it. It certainly confused the players because the rest of the players, as far as they saw, the, the character just disappeared. And so they, there was a lot of where are you, I'm right here sort of stuff. Cool. So yeah, you can you can definitely do that with dynamic effects and have a trap appear, which would be really useful if you have like a a trap that springs and it makes a hole in the floor. You can just make the token instead of having an invisible token like um, what I have here. Instead of having it invisible, it could be made into a um, uh, not invisible, I mean like transparent uh, token image. You could make it into the actual whole um, image for the token and then you toggle its visibility so the floor just becomes a hole and the token is captured in the middle of it. So for those joining a little late, you can, with the capture, if you try to jump over an obstacle, it just stops your movements and puts you right in the center of the trap. All right, so how can we do that, Tim? Uh, so I, I was just looking at dynamic effects. It says here, set token visibility. And I'm a really bad person because I didn't read any of that. I just looked at this beautiful line here that is like... That's all you need. Yeah. The name of the token. Okay, so the name no, or the ID? ID. The ID, okay. So the ID. way I do it is usually I just have this um, console here. And I have Furnace, uh, my module Furnace, with Enable, Debug, and Enabled. And so you can see everything that happens, all the hooks that are being called from the API of Foundry VTT. So if I hover on this, it will give me the token. But the problem is if I move my mouse from here to here and then I hover on other stuff, it can get complicated. So I just click to select, then I just look for Control Token. And then there's my token. I can just click it and look for ID. Should be somewhere in here. Where's ID? I don't see ID. Well, then I'll go look into data ID. There you go. So I can do this. So token visibility becomes true. Make visible, I called it. So let's make this thing transparent. Uh, let's move this dude. All right. And should we give it some kind of image other than transparent? I don't really know what I have. This is mostly like my assets library is just filled with things I use for testing more than anything else. So yeah, there's this thing here. And where's my player view there it is so I am moving here and then I'm just going to jump all the way across and of course I first need to actually make that <laughs> part of the uh, of the trap so I can do like I did with the other one like add chat message and all that or I can just drag and drop the macro right here so let's let's test it first actually let's click there you go see it worked which is great now let's make that invisible there now let's do it from the player's perspective I do this and boom I have my other macro and the dynamic effect does its job of making the token visible and was there no chat message, just that. Perfect. All right. Anything else? I don't remember what else it can do. Let, let's go through the readme real quick, right? So actors, we can open journal entries. We did that uh, early. We did the moving to another scene as well. Roll table. Oh, I didn't do roll tables. I don't actually remember. 
Now I probably did test it. Uh, let's create a table and ooh description role and let's create a couple of entries here hello world balance it save okay so we'll do it on trap number two they're my roll table. Where is trap number two? Do we have a trap number two? We don't. Let's create one. A transparent token and we're going to call it trap number two. And it's a click token because it's visible. So there. Anytime I click on it, it will roll the table and say activated trap number two because my journal here says token with the name trap number two send the chat message activated trap number two and then this roll table cool now what else let's go back to the readme uh, when a scene gets opened we did that earlier for those who joined a little late you can just go look at the VOD. Um, all right, so what options do we have? Right, we have preload, uh, which I've shown earlier. We have click, we have move, we have stop movements. Right, so with stop movements option, what I can do is my trap number two, let's remove that roll, we don't need it. What I can do is say um, it's a move type and I want to stop movement. <coughs> so what will happen here is, uh, it's right here. So if I try to move, like you hear me like clicking my mouse, I can't enter this area. There's no walls, but it's almost as if there's a wall. The difference is um, it's happening through a trigger. So I could have it say, uh, like I could have it on top of a fire and just have it say, uh, like you can't enter the fire um, because you will get burned or something. I don't know. I'm not creative enough. I just give you the ability to do stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can have you can add the option stop movements, and it will prevent moves from happening. Um, so I could jump over it, right? I could jump over it. This is the difference with a wall. I could jump over it, but I just can't drop into it. See? Yeah, that's the difference with a wall. Cool. Um, so that can be useful if you have like a corridor and there's a hole in the corridor um, that the players can jump so you can make them jump over it but they can't stop in the middle of the hole there you go there's a use case um, let's go back to check in the chat messages uh, from twitch what are people asking um, if you use the scene preload and say a player moves to a staircase or doorway, some trigger that changes level, how would you move their token? What do you mean? If you use the scene preload and say player moves to a staircase or doorway. Oh, so what you're asking is you want to teleport players from, like move players from one scene to the next. I did that earlier, like you can see here the hello actor moves players to the scene called useless, which which was useless and now it's useful to demo this thing. And is this the hello actor? Yeah, this is the hello actor. So if I click here as a player, it moves me to the other scene. As simple as that. And I can, I can change it to, well, I, I can make it invisible or change it with the options to make it into a move trigger and now if i go here i automatically get moved to the other scene all right 
uh, massive viewer numbers go to the head already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can macros actor triggers manipulate tiles? Macros actor triggers could manipulate tiles. I haven't done it personally, but I don't see. No, I don't think you could because you have to remember that the the scripts, the macros that get executed, are executed by the player themselves. So they can't do something that they wouldn't be able to do as players. So what we did here with the make yeah. visible macro is use dynamic effects to toggle the visibility of this token. Since the player here on this side doesn't have ownership of this token, they can't toggle their visibility. But as the GM, I can do it. So what dynamic effects does is as long as the GM is logged in, um, the player will actually send the request to the DM to toggle the visibility of the uh, of the token, which is why it works. Um, for tiles, I don't know if Tim has done anything regarding tiles. No, I haven't. Okay. So, um, no, you can't uh, toggle the visibility of tiles. You can't manipulate them at the moment. Uh, potentially, if you're being super nice to Tim, he'll add that as well to dynamic effects. Um, but in the meantime, like I did the demo earlier, um, you can just use a token uh, to show the, the, the trap itself. Um, but yes, having a tile would probably be better so that the players don't see this outline here um, over the... Um, yeah, it's good. Good point. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Atro coming to see us. Can Tim help me create this one? I answered the pin question. I'm really like, I think I'm really far in the chat. Um, is it in the module channel? Ah, oh, okay, now. Was talking about answering someone else. Add the actor token, just have a journal image and just have it open the journal. Well, yes, that's a good point. When I, we were talking about pins being unable to trigger on a click of a pin, you could have the trigger itself open the journal entry and just put whatever image you want on that token to act like. Right, so let, let, let's do that just for fun real quick. Um, so the icon, let me do image. I'm gonna make it small so it matches the other thing. And core data icons, SVG book. There you go. So it's not looking exactly like a, a uh, um, like a note icon. It does have the advantage of always being visible if that's what you want, regardless of the user setting here. So it's always going to be visible, but there. So if we go back to this note triggers, I can have it just trigger on a click, do the chat message or macro or whatever else. And so when they click, it opens the journal automatically and sends the chat message. So uh, who had, it was Optical Shadows who had the idea of doing this, of using the actor token as a trigger replacement for the notes. Uh, cool. Effects from FX Master. I haven't played with FX Master, but I bet you could do some pretty cool effect with it. I did have some um, from the Advanced Macros uh, Compendium of Furnace. There's like play audio that you can use to, to have it play some sort of uh, music, like an explosion or something when uh, a trap is triggered. Uh, let's see what else. Sparkle dynamic 
to that, let's go to the settings. Friction proof the FF might go. Gonna appeal that whole trap. Yeah, that's that's a cool trap that you can use for instead of what I did here with the stupid blacksmith thing. What? Why didn't that work? Oh, it needs to be HTTPS. Doesn't work on HTTPS. And yeah. I could probably like upload it. Ta-da! Cool. All right. So, what's next? Tim, if you have any ideas or uh, suggestions or something, let me know. Sure. Um, the questions that people have been asking a lot about is how to do teleporting. Yes. Um, and I, I think, in essence, there are, there are two strategies. One is that you have a token for the actor on every scene, in which case just switching scenes is enough. And then you can use the uh, sample move token macro to move them from one place to another. Um, and that means you don't need to use dynamic effects at all. It's really easy. The other option, which is what I use, is that I actually like to have only one token for each player in the world. So the dynamic effects teleport deletes the token on the current scene and recreates it on the new scene. So that's they're really the two approaches. Um, the only issue with the move approach is that for the GM or whoever has the token visible, they will see it running across the scene to get to the new location. But otherwise, um, you don't have to use dynamic effects to do that stuff at all. Um, with uh, with furnaces macros here, I did put a teleport one, which is very very simple. I admit, yeah. um, I believe you have a teleport to token, which I think is awesome because you can actually say this is the name of the token to teleport to. Um, and you can just put your destination onto the map directly instead of having to figure out the X and Y coordinates within the map. Um, and you, you yeah. can even give an offset. So um, uh, you are logged in as GM. Do you want to, to play around with it? Uh, although we won't see what you're doing actually on your screen. So. Um, so let let me try and do this there's this hole here and I'm going to make this player uh, let me just make it visible that it's the player this player teleport from this area to the next via a uh, Let me do here. We're going to call it destination teleport, right? And we're going to to have another one right here on this side that we are going to make into a three by three and call it teleport trigger there. So we have this trigger here that's teleport trigger and it will move people to the other side. And I'm going to create a new macro that's going to that I'm going to call teleport to destination to other side. Or I can just you know do this teleport to other side without the dashes. I want to show how you can 
call macros even that way. All right, so we do this. I'm going to call, uh, I don't think I need the async, do I? I shouldn't need to. Probably not, no. Yeah. So token to teleport, that would be token, um, because in macros, the variable token will contain the token that, um, that the player currently has selected. Oh, the name of the token to teleport to. I thought it was the ID. So I can just give the name itself as a string? Yep, just the name. Cool. So destination yep. teleport. And we'll do zero, zero, no offset. Right. So let's give that a try. If I do this and click here, it gets teleported. Nice. Oops. I just fell into my own trap. I got captured. Um, all right. So let's go here. Now let's create a um, our trigger. And it's going to be a token teleport trigger. And a chat message slash and because we have spaces, we can just put it under into quotes. So teleport to other side. And that should technically work. Let, let me make it into, let me make it invisible first. So let me make it into a, a capture and move trigger. So now as the player, I'm moving here, or I can just try and jump or whatever I do. If I cross that one, ah, that didn't do what I expected it to do. Uh, it did it on the, um, on the exit. Ah, I got captured again and again. Oh my God. Okay. And now you got I'm <laughs> out of the trap. Okay, so if I go here, I get teleported. There you go, and it it recenters my uh, my screen. So let me move this a little further here. Whoops. There, so I get teleported even earlier. So you could put that on top of a. Um, of a uh, uh, staircase and it teleports the people to the other side of uh, uh, scene as well. So if the, of the map. target token is on a different scene, it'll take them to that scene. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can have one at the bottom of a stairs in a different scene and just call it like bottom stairs level three and then uh, have them linked that way. Cool. That's some amazing work with dynamic effects. Um, because the, the, the one that I did, the teleport uh, one that I did was much, much simpler. Um, it will teleport the user, but not in a different scene. And while it will teleport them, the other players will actually see the um, the token moving rather than disappearing and reappearing on the other side. Um, so yeah. All right. Is there a way to pause play animation from WebM file type? No, there is not. Not in my knowledge. Um, I don't know anyway. Yeah. You could maybe well. No, you wouldn't be able to do that. Not from a player uh, side. Um, but you could potentially <coughs> just change the URL of the uh, of the uh, of the WebM to become a static image or something like that. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, so that's that's my intro to using Trigger Happy, which. You can see we can do a lot of things with it. It makes it kind of complicated when you look at 
all the things that you can do but at its base it's really simple you create a journal entry and you just drag and drop what you want and if you want like tokens or chat messages you just write them manually and that's it and then to do the more complicated stuff then you need the extra more complicated options but otherwise it's relatively easy now this map has been kind of boring um, so let's try and do something a little bit more interesting here let's see right I was showing something earlier I was doing something so I I made a trigger here called send emote which when clicked sends a chat message as someone else I'm not sure if the emote actually worked or not it doesn't look like it did um, Huh? It's different. I thought the emotes were like... Oh, that's how emotes are? I thought they were like uh, entirely orange lines with with a different kind of... Uh, maybe I'm confusing those chat messages with something else? I don't know. If I do slash Someone had a chat last night. Yeah, it's weird. I thought it was, I thought it was like uh, you know actions. Oh, I think I'm confusing them with Roll Twenty's uh, version, because I think Roll Twenty does it that way. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. Okay, sorry. I hope uh, Atro is not in the chat anymore, hearing me talking about Roll Twenty. <laughs> Um, but okay, so yeah, you can do add trigger emote and it will send an emote and if you do chat message you can Do this to say who is sending the message who is saying something so you could have a trigger like when they enter a bar like at the entrance um, You would have the barmaid or barman just saying what can I get you or something like that? Is there a way to trigger an in? character chat message that appears as a bubble for example a guard or assassin hiding in the shadows to alert the players that they are aware of their presence um, it would appear I believe as a bubble but but I don't think you can specify who uh, no chat bubbles actually I don't know if I on purpose disabled that or not I'm not sure you can um, create a macro to do it basically yeah so for example I've got a macro in dynamic effects that does a whisper so you can say whisper and then using the <coughs> target token you can do target token dot name and that will actually use the name of the character. Yeah. Actually, if I remember correctly, I also had it so you could do, let me try something, player two. And if I have a player two in here, I could do a token player two. I think if I do this, I didn't work. Oh yeah, because I don't have permissions. But there. So I am right here. I click here. My selection changes to the other token. See? When Once the, the trigger is executed, I change my selection. Because I said add token and I gave a name of a different token. So you could potentially do something like um, uh, all the triggers are executed sequentially so when one finishes then the next one gets called 
So you could have it like do this and then so it selects another token. You, the player does need to have permission to select that. And then when you call the chat message or whatever um, macro you want to call, that macro will be using that token that just got selected. Um, that's something that you can uh, also do. Let's see if there's any other options that I did. No, I think uh, I went through all of them. So now let's create a new scene where I want to do something really cool with it. I don't know yet how I'm going to do it or